be here on a layover right now so i figured let me just get this video out the way weekend i actually celebrated my 30th birthday so i'm now 30 like i said i was going into my 30s looking snatched feeling good feeling amazing and i did just that but let's get into the video channel it's your girl empress marvella josie whichever um first of all today's day one back at work i am six weeks post-op these last couple weeks has been hell um i have so much to tell you guys i don't even know where to start i don't even know where to begin but just like the caption says you will definitely get to see the body reveal on this vlog um including tips and tricks and basically things that they don't tell you or you really people really don't talk about when you get surgery it's so crazy i am sitting down right now actually i'm sitting on my bbl pillow um hopefully i try to make this a quick one and it won't first you're and the reason why i'm gonna say this is because this is part of the recovery you may see me itching a lot i promise you there's nothing wrong with me i promise i don't got nothing um this is actually a part of the healing process you get really itchy um whether that's on your your back your sides your stomach your butt your legs like it's just like itchiness um and i find the only thing that really gives you any kind of relief is honestly bio oil keeping yourself moisturized lotion uh, taking Benadryl but once again Benadryl makes you super drowsy so if you can find something that doesn't make you drowsy then that works the other thing that actually works well too is Dermoplast which is a spray um, especially the the blue can works very well also a dry brush you can use once your incisions are closed actually the dry brush I actually brought it with me on my layover because I was just like I'm not gonna go through this so it's can be like you can detach it and just carry this but this is not going to be able to reach in far places but you can detach it so that it doesn't take up too much space in your bag um but first thing is the itching once again you become super itchy the itchiness lasts for a while i don't know how long but my itchiness literally started i kid you not like about a week and three days post-op and I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I realize that my skin is super sensitive now. Everything I see grosses me out for some sense of reason now. Like certain things just, I, I don't know. But anyway, that's the, f let's talk about being on your cycle while having to wear your faja 24 seven, seven days a week, 365 days out of the year. If you want to do that, if you want to wear it for a whole year, or if you just want to wear it for three months, six months, just want to waist train, waist train is whatever works for you. Being on your cycle and being in this faja, if you're not a person that likes tampons, get used to it. Because if you don't have a faja that the hole is super big, like the faja I'm in right now, is it's large. So it the hole is like this wide probably, maybe a little bit wider. So it, everything is out and it, it elongates all the way to my butt. So this faja, I, I feel like I could actually go number two in this faja, but... I'm not comfortable in doing that. So this one, I can actually put on underwears and wear a sanitary napkin and be fine with it because I did try it and it works. But some people have to only wear tampons or wear cups. Number three, pins and needles sensation. So you just be randomly sitting there chilling, hanging out, macking, relaxing, chilling outside. And all of a sudden, you just feel a random zap, zap, zap. And sometimes they're consecutive and sometimes it's just one and you're fine you feel it in your sides you feel it in your back you'll feel it in your stomach your abdomen you'll feel it in your butt you'll feel it you know in your hips it is not a good feeling once again that's the third thing i want to talk about i don't like it i hate it it gets on my nerves because it's random and i'll be like oh <laughs> you know and can you imagine just twitching and people are looking at you like what the what is what is wrong with this girl but that is another thing that occurs when you have lipo 360 including a bbl or even if it's just lipo 360 is the pins and needles sensation it's not fun it doesn't feel good i'm feeling one right now in my back i don't like it but you could definitely feel that anywhere from three weeks and on 
Um, once again, it just depends on your body. I started feeling mine literally at three weeks. Uh, I think it might have been maybe a little bit earlier than that for me. Probably about two, yeah, two and a half to three weeks. I started feeling the pins and needles, and I definitely did not like it. Um, and it's I'm six weeks post op, and I'm still feeling it up to now. I've heard girls say that you're gonna feel that for a while, and when I mean a while, I don't mean six weeks, eight weeks. Mm, we're more so talking about three to four months. So let's talk skin tightness this is something that i don't know how i missed it but i missed it and i did so much research but this was not one of the things that i seen people talking about like the tightness of your skin i didn't think that the tightness lasted for this long a lot of people said oh you know when you're fresh out of surgery yes your skin is tight yes it feels crazy but nobody ever said that it lasted up to four months post-op five months post-op six months eight months post-op i've seen some girls say that they still feel it and they were 11 months post-op that's almost a year and your skin literally feels like take a rubber band and you try to stretch it and what it feels like that resistance is what your skin does but just think of it being tighter and literally it feels like your skin is resisting against whatever it is that you're trying to do whether you're stretching whether and i just felt it whether you're moving to the side ensure you're stretching as much as possible um try to do like the yoga stretches where they like bend over and you arch your back and you you stretch like this make sure you're stretching sometimes i get up in the middle of the night and i literally stretch all through the night because it is it is, <laughs> girl and ken dolls barbie the dolls and the ken dolls listen i hate it 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 i don't like it i will take the pins and needles over this feeling and this 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 tightness is different from fresh out of surgery tightness because fresh out of surgery i feel like you're feeling the tightness and you're feeling stiffness so you're not really feeling this this skin tightness but it literally feels crazy and nobody really talks about it i feel like like nobody really talks about it and it lasts a very long time like forever <laughs> like what they say about alcohol and you swelling and having a lot of inflammation is for real like i said my birthday weekend was this weekend and i didn't care about inflammation because i was just like i'm gonna drink i turned 30 i'm gonna have i'm gonna have me some alcohol and i had me some alcohol and I paid for it come I was drinking from Saturday all the way till Monday morning and I had a massage on Monday afternoon and she literally told me no more alcohol like I explained to her and she was like yeah stay away from the alcohol because you're super inflamed and in my back mind you my back has been like the most easiest process for me compared to my stomach because I do have fibrosis and um my back was like inflamed as well and I didn't really compress that weekend. So be sure that you try your best to stay away from alcohol. Or if you do drink, make sure you consume a lot of water because I didn't. And it's it's crazy because the whole weekend I was like, my skin didn't feel as bad as it does today and how it felt yesterday and the day before that. Like I was in excruciating pain from the tightness. It's like, it's really, really bad. And I'm just like so over it. It's like I said, make sure you're stretching. Um, whenever I'm out of the faha, whether I go shower, use the bathroom, whatever it is, I sit there and I'm like massaging. And my massage lady taught me this thing that you like pull up your skin while you're massaging. I try to stretch in the shower. I try to do it as much as possible to help with it, to, to stretch my skin back out. But I don't like it. The next thing like it. is the burning sensation. You tend to get that burning sensation in your hips, in your butt, especially if you're sitting for too long. Like I'm starting to feel it now a little bit because I've been sitting for a little bit, probably only like 10 minutes if that. My butt is starting to burn a little bit and it aches a little bit. Today I was feeling like this, this burning ridge pain, like literally just in one section going down my butt. Like it was like, like this. And... It doesn't feel good. It made me concerned because today, like I said, with flying and I had on the stockings, my dress, and I did have underwear on. And I thought maybe like it was compressing my butt, but no, because even when I took it off and I was like walking around and then I guess with me sitting, I felt like, okay, it's probably too much pressure going on right now. And that lasted for maybe about like three hours and then it went away and it, it came in, it, you know, it comes and goes. 
Um, like I said, your hip too. Now, sitting directly on your butt, I definitely sat directly on my butt at my birthday party and I probably only sat for three minutes because I was like so nervous and I remember like when I was getting dressed and I like put my shoes down, I like dropped, plopped myself down on the bed because I was in such a rush and I jumped back up because I felt it, like it felt so weird. Um, and then when I sat down in my chair, I was really uncomfortable. Like I felt the achiness in my butt and it just felt weird. So I just stood up at my party like so I could start sitting and you know, sometimes I will sit, but I'll like put the pressure on my thighs and not so on my butt. Um, that way there there isn't any pressure on there. And I think they freak you out so much about sitting on your new boot. Now, another thing that people don't talk about is clothes, bro. Nobody ever said that when you get this this procedure done, clothes is different. Now, when I mean different, like I'm a medium. I've been a medium practically all my life. I can no longer fit a medium off of the strength of because my waist is so small that everything bulges on me in the back of the dress. So... It's literally like you could take the dress and pull it without having to force to pull it, like literally, and wrap it. So now it's like I'm going to have to go into a small just so that this part could fit comfortable and this part could fit comfortable. Because in a medium, it's like I'm swimming in it, which is crazy, but then I need the bottom part to be like a large because my butt is big. And same thing, I haven't been able to, you can't wear jeans yet. I think jeans you wear at like eight weeks post up. I think you're allowed to start wearing jeans then. Don't quote me, I don't remember. Another thing that you struggle with is your bra size. Because remember, when your, your bra is measured based off of your back and then cup size. So if you're like a 36B sometimes, that's firmly because, okay, yes, your boobs is, is, is a B, but it's also based off of your back size as well. So now your bras there's a possibility that your bras may be too big and now you have to get a whole bunch of new bras so the other thing is if you're about to get surgery do not waste your money on buying bras or panties because there is a possibility that you might not be able to fit any of your old stuff i still i'm still able to fit into my panties thank god um and that was because i bought a mixture of medium and large panties but my bra is a little big in the back so now i'm just like why y'all ain't tell me this nobody decided to mention it. i was taking collagen but i noticed when i started taking it my heart started to react to it so i don't think my body liked it so i stopped taking it it was either that or the tea that was recommended to me which was candela tea or whatever um that helps with inflammation but my body was not reacting well to it so i stopped taking it um i still drink arnica tea I still drink the pineapple tea here and there. I've fallen off on it. Um, same thing with my water intake. I've kind of been bad with drinking water, so I need to get back to doing that. But make sure you're watching your salt intake. I cannot stress that enough because literally you will eat something that's salty and you will feel yourself swell. You will feel it. It does not feel good. It's not fun. It's terrible. Watch your compression. Make sure you're compressing enough because that is very very important like i made sure my birthday weekend i was compressing honey like i had the ace bandage on my faja and my boards on i say all of this to say and, and i hope that it's it's not embedded in your mind or for anybody that's out there watching that oh my god you got to go through all of that just to have surgery or what's the point or you know whatever the situation is this journey is not easy it's not for the week i've been saying it it comes with a lot a lot of people see on social media certain things and expect and think that this is how it is because it's the easy way at all oh, you get surgery and then boom wham bam you're snatched it's far from that nobody knows the dedication the having to wear a garment for 24 hours in a day unless you're showering pooping or it's getting cleaned um nobody knows about the skin tightness nobody knows about the sensitivity of the skin nobody knows about the itchiness nobody knows about the aching the burning these are things that people don't talk about um and like I said, I wanted to be as transparent as possible with this journey. Um, nobody talks about the emotional roller coaster. That you don't let anybody let you feel bad for making the decision that you make. You know, I've heard, oh, you should have waited until you had kids or God already gave you something. You looked good enough. Were you not satisfied or you wasn't? 
th that's ignorance. And I, and I say that and I'm going to keep saying it. It's ignorance because once again, people who don't understand why you do things or people who have their mindset as you got your body done because you're insecure or you don't feel comfortable with your body or whatever. At this point, don't even bother defending what you did. Don't bother trying to prove anything. You did it and you did it because you wanted to. And I tell people that all the time. I know I didn't need it, but I wanted it done because I wanted to go into my 30s looking snatched. And at the end of the day, I don't know if I'm really going to have kids. I don't know if I'm even going to be alive in the next 2, 5, 10, 15 years. I would love to, but I'm not planning my life for for like basically i'm not planning my life to be like oh i'm i'm gonna wait because i want to no i'm gonna do it because i want to do it now i say that to end the video with trust the process know why you made the decision and, and always remember as much as you're feeling down you're feeling upset you're feeling defeated you're over it you're tired of it remember that you made the decision to do what you did and it, it's worth it you're gonna see the results i really didn't see how amazing I looked until this weekend for my birthday and when I put on my birthday dress and I put on two other dresses and I was like damn and let me tell you don't let nobody tell you oh your ass is gonna be hard because honey this thing is thangin'. it is thang in <laughs> and that's because I be twerking and I sit and you know you do you get involved in other extracurricular activities if you know what I mean so once again just trust the process it's a long journey listen it's going to take you about six months to a year to really feel like you're normal. Thank you.